Hello, everyone. Welcome to another interview with Monero Space. Today, we have Vic Sharma from Cake Wallet on. We're, of course, really pleased to have him. He's a familiar face because he often goes on the Monero meets. So it's great to see you here again, Vic. But, you know, Vic, today we're celebrating. Uh, we both have our, our fancy wine uh, this evening because Cake released a new update today. So congratulations on that. Can you give us a, a little bit of rundown with, you know, what happened? What's the big news today with Cake? Uh, the big news is we have Bitcoin in, in Cake Wallet. That's the big news. And the reason I'm drinking wine is because when Apple says your app is under review to the time it's actually approved or denied, it's a very stressful <laughs> period of time. It seems to last forever. So that's why the wine. Um, but yeah, we, we added uh, Bitcoin today. Um, I think everybody knew this was in the works for a long time. And uh, today we put it out on both iOS and Android. And uh, it's been received uh, quite well, uh, both on Reddit and on Twitter. So I think it was the right move. Yeah, awesome. I know I'm really excited for, I think, reasons we'll get into later during this interview. But how long did it take you to add Bitcoin? What were some of the hardest parts? Um, I, I wouldn't say there was anything hard um, in, in, in terms of adding Bitcoin. I mean, there's a lot of tools and, and a lot of libraries and things you can use. Uh, unlike Monero, uh, when we started building the iOS wallet back in 2017, there wasn't really much out there at all. Um, our dev team had to build a lot of things from scratch and try to figure out on their own. There wasn't much documentation. Um, and, and, and no way am I knocking the Monero dev team. They do an amazing job. Um, but in terms of difficulty as in, I, I think that the biggest problem was uh, building a Bitcoin wallet and at the same time trying to keep up with all the Monero updates and hard forks and upgrades and patches and what have you. Um, and, and that's why Monero is, is a premier coin because it has such a strong dev community that's, um, keeping the technology up to speed. But, um, the only time we found delays in working on the Bitcoin wallet was when we had to stop and work on the Monero wallet. <laughs> but other than that, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that in the Monero community, we've really tried to slow down the rate of updates a little bit to give you a break. Um, not that we're trying to make Monero like a slow project or anything, but but it's one of those things where you know, it does create some stress. So Monero updates no longer really happen every six months anymore to help, to help you all add, add new features and things uh, yeah. to your wallet. So um, can you briefly walk me through the update on Cake Wallet? What, what you, you, Of course, you added Bitcoin. What other yeah. changes came with, with the update? Uh, so the biggest one, of course, is Bitcoin today. And the other biggest one, which users will feel right away, is an improvement on the synchronization of the wallet, of the Monero wallet, when it's syncing with the uh, blockchain. Uh, I think they'll, you'll see an improvement, uh, definitely. And I think everyone will be happy. The other thing we brought back in was backups, where you can back up uh, all your, um, your wallets, your transaction, your seed, your keys, into a, a single file, which is encrypted and password protected. Um, and you can save that file to a location of your choice and, and rebuild the wallet or restore the wallet from that file. Um, what else? We added notes for transactions. Uh, we improved our address book. Um, I think those are the major ones. Oh, and we also have a new theme, a color theme, <laughs> which is a light theme. Um, some people didn't, they thought the colorful theme was too colorful and the dark theme was too dark. So we added a, a light, white, minimalistic theme. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Sounds good. <laughs> no, and, and I'm obviously celebrating here with you wearing my Cake Wallet shirt that I got back in, <laughs> was it 2017, probably? Or early 2018? I don't know. Probably yeah, early, early after. Good. Yeah. So. Yep, er early fan here, Monero. <laughs> you know, one of the first open source wallets, and 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 by that, when you say, talk about the difficulty of adding Monero in the past, like you have to remember when, when Vic and his team were working on this, like you didn't have uh, what, what was the Monero GUI even out when you started work on this because that came out short, like not much before Cake Wallet. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
And the Monero was definitely, and I've, and I've talked about this in other interviews. I mean, in 2017, to find a uh, blockchain programmer, let alone a Monero, understood a Monero programmer, or even just Bitcoin was almost impossible to find. So at that time, 2017, that was the difficulty. And we had to let our dev team just pretty much go on a, a training on their own, you know, self-study, try to fix it, figure everything out. And uh, and we invested in that. And, and they came back and said, yes, we can do this and let's move forward. So different challenges for sure between Monero and Bitcoin. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And we're, obviously, we're, we're very pleased that <laughs> there's an end result that went really well there. Um, um, so I, I have something, uh, you know, a question on that later. But I think before we get there, can you explain to people what differentiates Cake now that you've added Bitcoin from other Bitcoin wallets that are out there? I think the biggest thing is open source. Um, we're 100 percent open source um, and moving forward. You know, our, our, our GitHub, our repo will be updated uh, more regularly. Actually, forget about update. We're going to use the public repo as our development uh, repo. So everyone can see exactly what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, it, to have a Monero and Bitcoin, and somebody tweeted about this today as well, is... In Cake Wallet, you'll get your seed for your Bitcoin wallet. You'll get your seed and keys for your Monero wallet. Whereas in other multi-coin wallets, they give you one seed phrase, right? And you have to seed and keys are derived from that. And you have to pretty much use that wallet with that seed um, to be able to, to get all your wallets back, to restore your wallets. Where we didn't want that. We we, we want to use a different Bitcoin wallet. We want them to be able to use the seed and, and go to another wallet. Uh, same thing with Monero. Uh, if you're not happy with Cake, we don't want you to leave Monero. <laughs> you can leave Cake. Uh, you can go to other other wallets, put in your seed, put in your keys, and, and download it. So I, I think that was important. Um, and, and you've seen, I mean, this question comes up on, on Reddit. We've seen many times. Hey, what if Cake was to go out of business tomorrow? What happens to my wallet? You know? So I wonder the wallets that only offer you one seed for their wallet. What if they were to just tomorrow? Um, you know, you'd have to go to some GitHub repo and download some script and run it. And I, you know, it's 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 not useful, workable for the common person. So that was important to us. Give separate seed, separate keys for each wallet to the user. Understood. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's really cool because I think now you will see Cake recommended not just as like a Monero community wallet, but I really hope that people will use this wallet as, as you know, a wallet that they recommend to people because it meets all the values they want out of a Bitcoin wallet. Hopefully it's a yeah. good Bitcoin wallet. And that will allow people to easily trade and transact with, with both assets or just one, you know, whichever one they want to use with, <laughs> with Cake. They don't have to use either. Um, can you describe some of the just, you know, on, on a pretty high level, some of the surrounding infrastructure with the wallets? Like, do you use Bitcoin Electrum? Do you yeah. store Monero view keys? You know, what, what is your basic overview look like for both Bitcoin and uh, Monero as a reminder so, to some? Yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, I'm not the most technical person on this issue, but uh, for Bitcoin, um, to get something up and running quickly and securely, we did use the Electrum server. Uh, Bitcoin Electrum. Um, it's fast. It's good. Um, I think users will see that. I mean, already people are responding, wow, this is such a fast wallet. And we've made sure we've uh, built enough servers so users don't see a lag. Um, and that's, um, what do you call it, uh, geolocation. So depending where you are, it'll connect to the closest uh, Cake Wallet Electrum server. Um, on the Monero side, as you know, there are no servers. Everything happens on your phone. Uh, the transaction is written on your phone. Um, there is, there are no servers. I mean, we do run some nodes, uh, Monero nodes, just, um, more for development and, and as a starting point, I mean, of course, users can switch to whatever node they want. They can switch to their own node. But we do run some nodes. Um, 
for development purposes and, and, and give a start a starting point to the users. Understood. Is is the infrastructure that you have, you know, pretty similar to other Bitcoin mobile wallets that you've seen out there? I'm not sure. I mean, I think Blue Wallet uses Electrum Server, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know who uses Electrum Server and who doesn't. So I, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Okay, understood. This is this is the Monero Space Channel, so I don't re I'm not an expert yeah. on exactly all the infrastructure people use either. So I'm surprised yeah. you're not talking about Zcash. I think we can just gloss over that point. Um, but <laughs> well, <laughs> let's just move into a you know more fun topic. So you have mentioned on Twitter and on Reddit with the Cake account uh, that CakeWallet has seen some pretty substantial growth over the last two months, and this is of course independent of you know adding Bitcoin because Bitcoin mm -hmm. was just added today. So can you talk a little bit about just how much Cake Wallet has grown over the last two months, you know, in terms of installs, exchange volume, whatever you're able to share. Can you share some of those numbers with the community? Sure. I mean, over the last 12 months, um, Monero installs increase by about 20 to 30 percent from the previous month. And it's pretty steady. It's amazing. But in uh, January, the total installs were 100 percent higher than December. Wow. So it, it doubled. Yeah, it doubled. So, I mean, which, which goes to show you that Monero adoption, Monero usage is growing, um, which is amazing. I mean, yesterday I looked at it and I thought, wow, 100%. That's crazy. And um, let's see. Let's see how this month goes. So let's see if it's sustainable. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, 100% month over month increases would be insane to yeah. sustain. So, I mean, even 30 is obviously right. incredible. Exactly. Exactly. Even if we go back to thirty percent uh, from from January oh, to February, no. I would be happy. Yeah, we'll cry. Yeah. So that's been pretty good. And, and the Android uh, side is picking up. You know, uh, combined now we're close to about eighty thousand installs. We'll see regular users of about I don't know five to ten thousand, depending on the week uh, usage of the app every every um, every month. So it's 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 been good. I mean, that, that is really good. It, it, it's like double the numbers I really last remember from you guys, which I guess makes sense if you have 100% growth in a month. Yeah. Um, so obviously, huge congratulations there. What do you think were some of the main drivers to your growth there? Do you think it was mostly just the general increase of the markets, or do you think there was something else probably on top of that? I think I think it's a combination of many things. I mean, I, of course, Monero being number one, you know, as more people learn about crypto, as, as somebody else tweeted today, all all roads lead to Monero. You know, so eventually, if you get into Bitcoin, if you get into crypto, and you actually start using it rather than just buying it on PayPal and just for the sake of speculation, if you actually start using it, sending and receiving it, you're gonna end up at Monero. So I think the biggest driving force has been Monero itself. Um, second factor is I have to say our wallet. It's very easy to use. It's uh, very easy to set up. Um, and when we designed it, we designed it from a user standpoint, not from developer or technical person standpoint. It just, you know, purely we look at everything. How is the user going to use this? How are they going to understand this interface? So I think it's that. So Monero, I think our wallet's easy to use. Marketing, we market the heck out of uh, Cake Wallet and Monero on Twitter and on Reddit. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it, but I think overall is just more interest in cryptocurrency again, which will lead you to Monero and which, which brings you the question, why Bitcoin? Why do we put Bitcoin? Um, is that your next question? Why do we put Bitcoin? Well, you know what? It actually, Can it be? Can it it, be? you know, it might've been my next question, but, but ultimately I, I wanted to first say that it is Really interesting to hear the all roads lead to Monero part, because I do think at least part of that is true, right? Which which is funny because in the past, especially, but but still up to this point, a lot of people think, you know, people might get excited by Monero. They might hear about the Monero's privacy features and think that they're exciting, but then they try to use it and, oh, good God, the wallets are so bad. You know, you have to use a command line. Like that's, I think that's in some people's mind, the perception of what, you know, a user Monero looks like they, they get excited. They want to have privacy. And then, oh my gosh, they fall into this huge trap of everything being super annoying. And I think, mm -hmm. 
I think you make a good point that it really in practice is often the other way around where someone tries to use Bitcoin in a non-custodial way and they really are actually running into far more trouble than someone would if they were using Monero in a non-custodial way. Um, mm -hmm. Is this something that you've seen a lot of users report back to you? Because, I mean, it is, I think, a, a relatively unshared uh, perspective from a Monero user or from a you know Bitcoin to Monero transition user. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny that still today or even till recently, so many people don't know that there are mobile wallets for Monero. Um, I mean, what, a few months back, uh, Doug from Monero Talk had Roger Ver, and he said, oh, I didn't know there's a mobile wallet for Monero now. And we had been in, we had launched over two and a half years. <laughs> you know? So either we're not doing a good job of marketing or, you know, it's just not out there. Um, but also what you say is correct. I mean, many times we have heard if Cake Wallet ever makes a Bitcoin wallet, I'm going to switch to that. Um so yeah, we, I, I think I think Bitcoin is still not as easy as people think. I mean, right now they're using Coinbase or Gemini, and yes, it's easy over there. But if you're using a true blockchain wallet, non-custodial true blockchain wallet, as I like to call it, then you know it's it's got it's still got the same hiccups that any any blockchain wallet has right now. Yeah, I think that's a good point. But the people we'll who generally that. are saying Monero is hard to use are probably the same people that are just using only you know, full custody wallet somewhere else. So I, I think that's a good point. Um, yeah. Okay, so now to your question, you know, they, they're asking of me the, the wrong way around, of course. Um, but so why, why did you decide to make Cake Wallet a Monero wallet before making it a Bitcoin wallet? Isn't this like the opposite order that you'd typically expect out of, I don't know, any wallet company? You know, <laughs> start start with the big market share and then move on to adding a, a cool project like Monero. Why did you do it the other way around? Start with Monero, then do Bitcoin. Well, the, the first reason Monero in 2000, you know, middle of 2017, there was no iOS wallet for Monero. There was none. So number one, there was that space, that, that void that needed to be filled. And um, we saw that void and, and uh, I took advantage of that, you know, and said, okay, this is something we need to do. And I had already studied Monero thanks to finding all your papers and presentations on, <laughs> online. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so why Monero at that time? Number one, Monero didn't have anything. And I, I became a big fan of Monero and I thought, okay, we need an easy way to use this. Okay, so you're saying that on, on the Bitcoin side, everyone was using Bread Wallet. Is that correct? Yeah, it seems to be the popular wallet at that time. Um, they pretty much had the market. But again, e e forget that even. Uh, the biggest reason was Monero didn't have a mobile wallet and uh, saw it as an opportunity to make something for the community, make something for Monero that everyone can use and promote the use of Monero. Um, but you know everything happens for a reason in the end when you look back right um our, our our team we had never made a cryptocurrency wallet you know and to do that for monero first actually was was a blessing in disguise because the monero community is very technical very supportive they understand the challenges of doing something like this and after our first launch i i have to say that we after the initial launch i would say from there on the community was a hundred thousand percent involved in the direction of cake wallet and you know what what features and and, and design uh, the cake cake wallet should uh, follow that was definitely influenced by the community and you know there were times when things wouldn't work and the community was understanding yeah that happens you know we understand you're building this on your own and, and it happens but you know, if something like that were to happen in Bitcoin, I think I think it would have been a total failure um, because there are a lot of non techies in, in the Bitcoin space. Got it. Was it always the plan to add Bitcoin to your wallet, or was it no? Okay, no, it was no, no. This actually came about after we. Um, implemented the exchanges, the third party exchanges that we have in the app. So our exchange partners tell us, and they've told us over the last year and a half, two years, is 
the volume, you know, 99% of the volume that's in Cake Wallet is between Bitcoin and Monero and, or Monero and Bitcoin, you know, back and forth. So, you know, having that, and I would say a huge 50, 60% of our support tickets are people wanting to convert, but they don't know which Bitcoin wallet to use. You know, right, you know, before we launched Bitcoin, you had to use an external Bitcoin wallet. So I think with, with these two issues combined, it just made sense for us to make it easier for the user to just put a Bitcoin wallet in there. Um, another motivation to put Bitcoin in there was to bring the Bitcoin world to the Monero world. You know, like you said earlier at the beginning of this, uh, of this uh, stream, that hopefully Bitcoin people will use Cake Wallet and then they'll learn about Monero. So that's also a motivation. Yeah, I, I think that's a really, really exciting opportunity for people to m learn about Monero. They can test it. They, they, they can use it as a good Bitcoin wallet on its own, but then they can dabble in Monero because Monero support is sometimes flaky at best. So the fact that you have a, a good Bitcoin wallet that also supports Monero, I think really ticks a lot of the boxes that a lot of uh, Bitcoin supporters generally are looking for. They might say, oh, well, you can use Monero for payments, but, you know, store everything in Bitcoin. Well, now, boom, here's Cake Wallet to hit that exact motive. Do you, do you see it the same way? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I think, it, I mean, it's a process, right? I mean, Monero is not something you can teach somebody, I feel. Uh, you can't, somebody that doesn't know anything about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, you can't be like, hey, let me tell you about Monero. And you start talking about open ledger and this and that and privacy, you know, it means nothing. You have to experience cryptocurrency and Bitcoin or, you know, or any open ledger coin to then appreciate what Monero has done and what it offers. So, so I think this is, this is a step in, in that direction. Yeah, I do too. And that's why I'm so excited about it. In addition to you getting more users into Cake yeah. Wallet, I see it as a, a mechanism to bring users also into the Monero Definitely. system. So I, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, switching topics a little bit. So XMR.to, uh, they seized mm -hmm. operations yesterday. In the past, XMR.to was a partner of yours. They <coughs> were an exchange that was, you know, provided at some point in Cake Wallet. Um, so can you give a few words about you know, your your opinion of what would happen with, with XMR.to with them seizing operations, and then talk about how, if if at all, this impacts Cake Wallet users, um, and, you know, in any way. Yeah, I mean, I have not heard anything other than what you you've heard on the you know the post and the blog uh, blog post on their website and the post on Reddit on why they seized operations, but. Um, I would imagine it's regulatory pressure and and uh, and I guess just regulatory pressure. I don't, I don't see any other reason, you know. I don't see any liquidity issues or anything like that because it's 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 uh, you trade as when the need when the need is there. Uh, when the user executes a trade, then you got to come up with liquidity, which is not a big deal. So I imagine it's purely regulatory issues. Um, but they were definitely a very important uh, part of uh, Cake Wallet. In fact, uh, they had the exclusivity for a long time on that pair in that direction, the XMR to Bitcoin pair. They had the exclusivity. So if you went into Cake Wallet, you couldn't use Change Now or for that, for that direction, you had to use XMR too. And, and the Monero community loves it. Um, one of their best features was getting the exact amount of Bitcoin that you want, which is very important when you're making a payment to somebody, you know, and that's something that's going to be missed in Cake Wallet. Uh, users have already expressed that. Um, maybe that's something we can approach change now with uh, to add that feature in. Uh, that's something to consider uh, that this is, I mean, this all happened yesterday, as you know. So we, we also are kind of um, figuring out what the next step is. But having said that, if you want to convert Monero to Bitcoin, you can do that right now in, in Cake Wallet using Change Now and uh, Morph Token. So, so that that that's a whole day left uh, regarding that fixed Bitcoin. 
receiving amount. So that's something we have to we have to find a solution. Understood. Yeah, I mean, it's good to know it that you have other options in the app too that that cover that pair mm -hmm. too. I mean, out of all the pairs to cover, it's obvious to cover that one, <laughs> especially yeah. since you now have both of them in your wallet. So mm -hmm. I hope you have a mechanism of converting between the two. Um, <laughs> I guess, I guess, to that point, like having just the fact that you have a Bitcoin wallet en enabled now just gives users a little bit more confidence because they can convert mm -hmm. Bitcoin to their own wallet, and now they're not you know, losing any change or anything, let's say they're right, able right. to receive the Bitcoin in the wallet and then send it. If, if they really are worried about that, um, you know, off by a few extra digits issues. So, yeah, you know, that's a great point. I didn't even, I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. If, if they have a new <laughs> point one Bitcoin, they can go ahead and do a little bit just to be safe and receive it in their wallet. And then no understandable yeah. yeah i think i think that makes sense um all right really cool thank you for giving a, a few words there i know that they were very important in helping drive initial monero adoption especially before we had you know quite as many options as we have right now but luckily the ecosystem right. really has grown since um so i got you know moving on to you know the growth of monero ecosystem and what's next um so what is next for cake wallet right are, I, I know that a lot of people view Cake Wallet as sort of the wallet for the streets in a way. I know that's Samurai Wallet's thing. I know they 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 brand themselves as the you know the cryptocurrency wallet for the streets. But re recently, we've seen Cake Wallet really take that title in a big way, where Cake Wallet is is often used because Monero is often used for non custodial transactions. So yeah. is you know at, at the moment you've integrated a pretty simple. Bitcoin, you know, functionality into your application where you don't have complicated samurai mixing rounds and the whole like, is that something that you're considering? Is, is it something where you look at the app and you say, I wish there was either an, an, you know, an integration with samurai or to have similar features as samurai? Has that ever crossed your mind? I mean, users definitely ask about that. Um, and that's something we can consider in the future. But, you know, when, whenever anybody talks about samurai or mixing or coin joint, whatever, I don't know, all, all these different technologies. What do we always say in the Monero community? Just use Monero. That's it. Just use Monero. You don't have to do all that. And it's super cheap. It's under a penny. Um, but, you know, the, this, the crypto space is changing so fast all the time. And, you know, technologies and coins that you thought were going to last forever six months ago are gone now, you know. So, in the future, if there's a big demand for it, we may consider it, but not right now. Um, the effort and the cost to put that in where where a user can just use Monero, it, I, I don't see us doing that in the next six months. Uh, you know, looking at, I think we have a six month plan right now, and we definitely don't want to. We it's not in our six month plan. I did. I have to say, I mean, obviously, you know, the two of us are very much involved in the Monero ecosystem. And to us, it's pretty obvious. But I, I do see how the answer for, okay, why don't you add this really, really complicated, built out crazy tool for Bitcoin into your wallet when you can just use Monero? And, and as long as you keep up with the Monero updates, you're, you're already staying ahead of the curve here. So do you see, I guess, broad question, do you see... Bitcoin in your application more as something that you hope that users will natively use, or do you personally see it more as a means to get users more into Monero? I think a combination. I mean, um, can you hear me by the? Oh, can you... yeah. You said you said it was a combination. Um, the, the wallet is very basic right now. There's no lightning uh, network. There's no, what is that called? Um, output control. What is it called? Uh, Coin control. Yeah. Or output control. There's a bunch of words. Yeah. It's the wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
you know, do for example, I use Bitcoin natively. I don't use it on Lightning. I don't use Coin Control. Somebody wants Bitcoin, I just send it. You know, um, and I think most people do. I mean, um, so I think I, I mean I'm hoping people will just use it as as natively as Bitcoin is meant to be used, and I hope people learn about Monero and convert that Bitcoin to Monero, and and drink the Monero Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. So, so if, if, that, if that's not within your six month plan, can you talk about what is in your six month plan? Uh, six month plan, other tools for Bitcoin are definitely in our six month plan. Uh, well, I mean, let's just go back a little bit. I mean, we want to do F, it's a huge thing about Afterward, Afterward, Afterward. So we definitely want to get our Android version on Afterward. Uh, um, we would like to do lightning for Bitcoin. Uh, we'd like to be able to connect to Tor nodes, uh, nodes that are running on the Tor network. Um, we want to get third party, uh, Bitcoin or, or other coin sellers in our wallet. So people can cryptocurrency and then convert to Monero. Um, yeah, that's it. Those are the big things coming up. Awesome. Yeah, I mean that's that's really exciting. Are you planning on changing your cake well logo? Because you know, just just to pull this mm. up real quickly, it very clearly includes one coin's logo inside of it, but it doesn't include the Bitcoin logo. So, what what are your thoughts there? Is it going to stay the same, or are you going to be like a more, I don't know, a picture of a cake? Who who knows? Did you did you see the name change? Matt? Did you change the name? Sorry. No, I, I did not notice you changed the name of Cake Wallet. So I'll change it. It was always called Cake Wallet for Monero. That was the full name, Cake Wallet for Monero. Now it's just called Cake Wallet. Okay. I saw that you've been gobbling up a lot of the Cake Wallet native descriptions instead of Cake Wallet XMR. Like the Twitter account was previously Cake Wallet XMR. Now it was now it's just Cake Wallet. Um, you have a subreddit R cake wallet, for example, mm -hmm. it, it certainly is more inclusive. So, okay. You drop, you drop the name from cake wallet for XMR to cake wallet as is. And yeah, okay. the logo, I'm, the logo, I'm a little torn, uh, tell you the truth. Uh, so in one way it's cool. It's kind of, you know, part of history and it's historical. And if let's say more, there's more Bitcoin users, I just throw there. People, you know, it'll be like a trivia question, like, you know what that M and cake well it originally was for? <laughs> Type of thing. <laughs> I hope um, we don't get there where it's, I, or at least if it is a trivia question, I hope that it's a very easy trivia question. How about, how about that? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, no, no plans to change it right now. Yeah, but, but it has crossed our minds. What should we do? You know, should we, but there's just other, bigger important things to worry about right now got it got it okay so i mean we've gone through most of my questions that i have i wanted to keep this pretty short you know of course again congratulations vic for finally hitting the milestone that you've been taking so many months to get to, to get over the line i know people have been sent so many test versions and it's finally out and it's here and, and you it has all the major features people want out of the bitcoin wallet so obviously first congratulations to you and i think the monero it's not just me saying that, of course, but I think it's really the whole Monero community that is saying this too, because I think most people certainly recognize that this will substantially increase, a, you know, interest in, you know, in privacy tools generally. And I think that, you know, Cake Wallet is a very, very good privacy tool for most people. So, it, you know, it's great to see that. Um, are there any final thoughts that you wanted to, you know, leave in the interview? Any Anything that you want to say at this point? Sure, sure. I do. I do. Um, you know, the devs and the designers, they get all the credit, like, you know, the app looks great. It works great. But uh, the unsung heroes of Cake Wallet is the support staff. You know, the um, and, and, and we do. We do get a lot of tweets and Reddit posts that the support has been great. So, you know, we have we have support staff now 24 hours a day um, to answer, you know, and we use Zendesk. Uh, and we have live chat as well on our website. So I just want to give a shout out to our um, support crew. They're, they're just amazing. 
24 hours a day, they're helping people. So we have people around the clock. And that was, uh, and I said that on Diego last time. He said, what do you think was part of your success? And I think it was hiring support people. I think that's that's been a key to show users we're there. We're there for you. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point too. You know, if, if you have issues using Monero's wallets, you have a 24 seven dedicated help desk to help you, right? So yeah. it's, it's it, yeah. I, I and a lot of times people, people write to us about the GUI. People write to us, you know, about other apps, you know, <laughs> we, we help them, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually hilarious. Because I, I will say you, you know, speaking from a Monero space perspective, like we have seen enormous growth in the amount of requests we've seen just general Monero support for all wallets. I'm sure that you've seen right. something similar on, on cake, perhaps, perhaps even extrapolated because you focus on users that want a simple experience compared to the CLI where people kind of know what they're signed up for. At least I hope. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's obviously really, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that you are taking that seriously and you're really helping those users out because obviously it first and foremost reflects on cakes, you know, cake and people will think of cake first and foremost, but it will also reflect on the Monero ecosystem. Okay. So it really is a service and how people think of the Monero ecosystem too. So obviously thank you for me um, in terms of taking that very seriously and moving past the stereotype that Monero is just for people who are nerds and don't know the, what, what a normal person thinks it's, it's good to have such an outspoken, uh, you know, friend in the Monero ecosystem that is focused so heavily on these things. Um, anything else, Vic, that you want to talk about here? I think we covered everything. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, again, congratulations. I, I'm celebrating here at, you know, way too early of an hour with my wine. I haven't had dinner yet, <laughs> but I have the wine out for you. Oh, yeah, aren't so, you like two hours behind me or one hour behind me, right? Yeah, I'm in Central, so I'm one hour behind yeah. you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously been great having you. Hopefully we'll see you on the Monero meet that is this weekend. So we have more stuff coming out to the Monero channel. Um, again, this video is being posted the same day of the Bitcoin being added to Cake Wallet. So bringing you important updates or whatever as soon as possible. But also Monero Talk seems to have launched a very spicy interview today. So check that out also. Not, not, to, mm. not to conflict with our own content, but they did put out a a pretty spicy interview earlier today with Peter McCormick. So check that out too, if you haven't seen that already. Um, anyway, uh, thank you so much, Vic. It's been great having you. Great having Cake Wallet be part of the, the Monero ecosystem. And it's great to see it grow to also cover the Bitcoin ecosystem. So uh, thanks, thanks yeah. for having me on. See you soon. Bye, Vic. Take care.